Rome Civilization The term Ancient Rome in modern historiography refers to Roman culture from the establishment of the city of Rome in the 8th century before Christ until the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century after Christ. The Roman Kingdom, CA 753-509 BC, Roman Republic, 509-27 BC, and Roman Empire, CA 27 BC 476 AD, are all included. Traditional dating places the founding of ancient Rome at an Italic village along the river Tiber in the Italian peninsula around 753 BC. By using a combination of treaties and military might, the settlement eventually developed into the city and polity known as Rome and came to rule its neighbors. It eventually gained control of the Italian peninsula and built up an empire that included most of Europe as well as the nations and peoples in the Mediterranean region. With an estimated 50 to 90 million people living there, or around 20% of the world's population at the time, it was one of the biggest empires in antiquity. At its peak in AD 117, it occupied an area of almost 5 million square kilometers. In the course of the Roman Empire, the state went from being an elective monarchy to a democratic classical republic to an increasingly autocratic semi-elective military dictatorship. At its height, it dominated much of the Middle East, including Anatolia, the Levant, and portions of Mesopotamia and Arabia, as well as the North African coast, Egypt, Southern and Western Europe, the Balkans, and Crimea. The Greco-Roman world, which includes it and ancient Greece as part of classical antiquity, is referred to as having similar civilizations and societies. Modern language, religion, culture, technology, law, politics, government, warfare, art, literature, architecture, and engineering are all products of ancient Roman civilization. Rome developed a residential publica form of government, which served as an example for contemporary republics like the United States and France. Rome also modernized and enlarged its military. It accomplished remarkable technological and architectural feats, including the construction of aqueducts, roads, and more opulent monuments and facilities throughout the empire. Rome ruled the Mediterranean after the Punic Wars with Carthage. The founding of the Roman Empire, beginning in 27 BC, saw the expansion of Rome's imperial realm from the Atlantic to Arabia and from the Rhine's mouth to North Africa. The longest-running conflict in history, the Roman-Persian Wars, which involved Rome and the Persian Empire, began in 92 AD and had a lasting impact on both empires. Roman dominion expanded to its greatest extent under the reign of Trajan, engulfing the whole Mediterranean basin, the southernmost reaches of the North Sea, and the borders of the Red and Caspian Seas. During the imperial era, republican mores and customs began to deteriorate, and civil wars frequently preceded the ascent of a new emperor. Before some stability was restored in the Tetrarchy era of imperial authority, splinter nations like the Palmyrene Empire would momentarily split the empire during the crises of the 3rd century. The western portion of the empire disintegrated into autonomous barbarian kingdoms in the 5th century due to internal unrest and attacks by several migrant peoples. Up to its collapse in 1453 AD, the eastern portion of the empire remained a major force in the Middle Ages. Early Italy and the Founding of Rome Around 400 BC, agriculture was established in Italy. Copper tool use began around 2000 BC, and the Bronze Age lasted until the end of the first millennium BC. With the rise of the Villanovan culture in Etruria in the 9th century BC, cities began to form. Around 1000 BC, a culture unique to Latium that was associated with the more significant Villanovans is discovered in the archaeological record. This culture is known as the Latial culture. From the middle of the 8th century to the 5th century BC, city-states were established and took over as Italy's primary form of political organization. They also began to organize their cities and establish organized religious cult centers. Large organized city-states had developed in Etruria by the 7th century BC, and because of their effect on Italy, subsequent Roman writers thought many of their fundamental customs had Etruscan roots. Around 1000 BC, 
archaeological evidence of a settlement in the Rome area first appears. Large-scale organization doesn't start until around 800 BC, with the discovery of the first tombs in the necropolis of the Esquiline Hill and a wall made of clay and wood that dates to the middle of the 8th century BC at the base of the Palatine Hill. The Romans began draining the valley between the Capitoline and Palatine Hills, where the Roman Forum now stands, around 650 BC. The Capitoline Hills Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus and the Forum Boreum, which is situated between the Capitoline and Aventine Hills, were being built by the Romans by the 6th century. Even the Romans had a founding legend. The mythological city of Alba Longa's overthrown monarch compelled one of its princesses to become a virgin priestess of Vesta, but she was impregnated by Mars and gave birth to two twins, Romulus and Remus, who they believed were the cause of their city. The sons, who had been given the death penalty, were first saved by a she-wolf and then by farmers. They later went back to replace the overthrown Alban king and located the city where they had been saved. Following a disagreement, Romulus killed Remus and took full credit for founding the city. The legend dates back at least to the 3rd century, and later Roman antiquarian Marcus Terentius Varro assigned the well-known year 753 BC as the city's founding year. Another tale claims that Prince Aeneas led a troop of Trojans on a sea journey to establish a new Troy after the first city was destroyed at the conclusion of the Trojan War, according to the Greek historian Dionysius of Halicarnassus. They finally touched down on the shores of the Tiber River after spending a long time in choppy waters. The men wanted to return to the sea shortly after they landed, but the women who were with them did not want to go. One woman, Roma, suggested that in order to stop the ships from departing, the women could set them afire at sea. The men were first furious with Roma, but they soon understood that they were in the perfect location to settle. They gave the hamlet its name to honor the woman who set their ships on fire. The Trojan prince Aeneas is destined by the gods to create a new Troy, according to the mythology told by the Roman poet Virgil in his classical epic poem The Aeneid. Although the women in the epic also reject returning to the sea, they are not abandoned on the Tiber. Aeneas, who had come to Italy to wed Lavinia, was compelled to go to war with Turnus, her previous suitor. The poem claims that Aeneas was the ancestor of the Alban kings, making Romulus the founding father of Rome. Kingdom Their reign as kings of Rome is clearly attested by literary and archaeological evidence, as well as by texts from the fragmentary 6th century BC. A vestigial rex sacrorum was kept in place long after the Roman dynasty was abolished to carry out the monarch's former priestly duties. Romans thought their elective monarchy, which had seven legendary monarchs who were entirely unconnected by blood, worked. Evidence of Roman expansion is clear in the 6th century BC, by its end, Rome controlled a territory of some 300 square miles with a population perhaps as high as 35,000. The regia, a palace, was built in the sea. The Romans credited the regal period with the founding of the Senate and their first popular organizations in 625 BC. Rome also began to exert more control over its neighboring Latin nations. Archaeological evidence points to a shared culture, despite later Roman myths like the Aeneid asserting that all Latins were descended from the titular character Aeneas. The Jus Laetiae, which attests to reciprocal citizenship and marriage rights between Latin cities, along with celebrated religious holidays, further demonstrate a shared culture. The Romans had taken control of the majority of this region by the end of the 6th century. Roman Gladiator an ancient professional fighter known as a gladiator used specific weapons and armor in most cases. From 105 BCE to 404 CE, they competed in wildly popular organized games in massive, specially constructed arenas all around the Roman Empire, official contests. Gladiators had a short lifespan because battles were frequently to the death, therefore even while it was in some ways a glamorous career, the majority of fighters were slaves, former slaves, or condemned convicts. Unquestionably, one of the most popular forms of entertainment in the Roman world was gladiator spectacles. K. 
kings of entertainment. Emperors and wealthy nobles used the gladiator games as a platform to show off their wealth to the general public, honor military triumphs, mark the arrival of important dignitaries, recognize birthdays, or just divert attention from the political and economic issues of the day. The public was drawn to the games because they offered gory entertainment and were fascinated by competitions in which the outcome was literally in the balance of life and death. Throughout the Roman Empire, enormous arenas hosted wildly popular events, with the Colosseum, or Flavian Amphitheater, being the largest of them all. 30, 40, or even 50,000 spectators from all walks of Roman society flocked to watch gory spectacles where wild and exotic animals were hunted, prisoners were put to death, religious martyrs were thrown to the lions, and the show's main attraction, the gladiators, applied all of their fighting prowess in a kill-or-be-killed competition. The gladiators were symbols of the Roman virtues of honor and courage. Contrary to common belief, prisoners who were due to be executed in the ceremonial mock naval battles, Namakia, that were also held in the arenas chanted the words, Ave Imperator, Morituri te salutant. Hail Emperor, we who are about to die salute you. At the start of each performance, Thank you for watching. View more our channel videos.